I'm on a couple minutes early waiting for those gardeners to quit making that noise in the backyard. I like coming on a couple minutes early. That way everybody sees I'm here and they don't question if the live's not going on while I'm getting my gloves going. So how's everybody doing on this Saturday morning? Spring is starting to have sprung here. Uh, while there is, is a storm warning with several feet of snow supposedly coming our way, I'm sure it's only in the mountains, uh, yesterday everything was bursting in bloom. And here in uh, the valley where I live, we grow about 80% of the stone fruit and grapes and stuff for the almonds for the world. And so they open up something called the blossom trails this time of year. And as long as your allergies don't bug you, right? Uh, here, let me skip my ad so I can see you guys talking to me. There's an ad here from TikTok on my screen. Hey, Sally. So who's on today? We got Katherine Medford. We've got Sally Dalton. We've got Janelle, Sandy Sanders, Audra's in the house. Saskia Smith is here. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, so yeah, it's Saturday morning. Yesterday was a little bit wild. I've, uh, there's this resin mixer that, fair, good morning, John. Welcome, welcome. Uh, there is an auto mixer that Fairy Art Mother sent me, and I mean, I know I can read instructions, but for some reason I can't figure out how to get this little thing to work. And after yesterday's live, she goes, Leslie, you gotta figure this thing out, you know, because I mixed up my resin two hours before I was trying to get those droplets on. And anybody that saw yesterday saw the whole droplet situation going down. Uh, it's kind of crazy. And I wasn't too thrilled with the color combination. I felt like I kind of let my own nerv nervousness get out of control. And yet, of course, I'm gonna have to flip the camera over to show you guys this. Uh, those big honking drops. <laughs> turned out kind of weirdly cool. I mean, really weirdly cool. This is when I use the triple color in there and you can see this area here that looks kind of like it's got color in color. So this was the violet and then the blue and then the gold on top. And I'm kind of liking that color combination. This was the uh, another one of the violet and the, that blue and that gold on top. The, uh, this was the rain, that greenish gray green color that I mixed in the interference. And what's interesting is the colors beneath will still come through subtly because the whole idea of your interference is while it may shift the light and change the way you see your colors, is interference also allows 95% of the light to pass through the flake, bounce on your surface, and refract back to your eyes. And so that's why you're seeing the colors. So I love this technique. I somehow need to master this. Janelle yesterday had asked me if I could stir something and I tried to stir it literally while this stuff was seizing up, like it wasn't even coming off the spoon, but it did, uh, it did allow me to stir it. So you can see the different color combinations. Uh, like this one had the gold on the bottom and just the blue on top. So anyway, this area is kind of bugs me. You know, I can go in here and add beans of gold. I could add some black. Um, after I looked at this, I thought, wow, what a, this would be interesting to have some kind of treatment like this, maybe on the top of a canvas and the whole bottom. I know the gold is amazing. That's one thing about our interference gold. It floats. Even be putting the clear on top, you can see that the clear pushed it down and we still got a floating gold effect. Yeah, I know. I, uh, I went and saw my skin doctor this week. And this sort of reminds me of some of the things I saw on the wall. I thought maybe I could make something similar like this or just kind of touch this up so I'm, you know, more proud of my color combination surrounding it, my negative space, and maybe give this to my doctor because these look like the cells that they're looking at your skin. 
a neural microscope. So, <laughs> yeah, anyway, all right. Uh, today we're going to kind of go off. Uh, I know the gold is amazing. Hey, Sparkle, did you have a chance to see the piece from yesterday? Just a quick little glance. I mean, I just did a whole thing on it, but this way you can get a little peek at it before I jump into the next thing. These are those droplets that uh, I created with dropping the interferences on top of each other. Anyway, so... Um, Today, uh, God, there's a lot of stuff to cover, but I've been asked many, many times, uh, can you make a cell activator out of name it, ta-da, ta-da, whatever it is that we sell. And uh, I'm not sure how many of you guys were involved in the original uh, launch of that bloom technique when it came out. Uh, a lot of us waited for the countdown yeah, that would be great for the dermo office. You're absolutely right. I feel like you're touching it up and giving it to them or something similar. I think he'd be blown away. Uh, thank you, Sparkle, because that's what I was thinking. So I get asked a lot, um, can you make a cell activator out of prison pore? Can you make a cell activator out of vivid intense? Now it's the purely pigments. And um, those of us that were here in the very beginning when that class launched, there's a, or maybe not, you know, there is a specific chemistry that Amsterdam, let me get a tube of my golden out here, and golden share. There's a chemistry in their base. It's got nothing to do with the color. Now, there's been other paint companies that people have been figured out how to modify and make a cell activator out. But we know for sure if you use golden heavy, medium to heavy body paint, you use the Amsterdam paint. And while, yeah, this is a beautiful quality, it's usually much more expensive. And the Amsterdam is a fantastic product for the uh, cell activator. And their white has been known to actually sell up even just using water. Again, that's a 50-50 chance. That's no guarantee. But we do know that the Amsterdam and the Golden have the correct chemistry in their acrylic. It's all about the chemistry in the acrylic that's going to make that cell activator work. It's not. It's not our. It's not a specific color, because uh, there's so much information out there for fluid artists now. Uh, we learn about paint density, and and we know that uh, in the 40s, I forget the name of that artist. Uh, he was from Spain, I think, discovered that when uh, uh, titanium dioxide is heavier and when mixed with another paint, it dropped and it created this crazy cell, cell effect for him when he was only using black and white. And so it was kind of in the 40s, I think, when, of course, it's been documented. That doesn't mean somebody didn't discover that sooner. But we keep experimenting and pushing the envelope over and over and over today. So today I want to do, um, don't be shocked everybody, a bloom, sort of a bloom. Uh, I did the bloom, I went down that rabbit hole and it's, it's a fun one uh, for weeks after the class launched. Uh, I had sent some of my product to the artist that discovered this technique and she had tested it and found that uh, our enamel bases in the US, whether it's uh, a deep base from the hardware store, or you're getting it from us, because we repackage it. We've been repackaging that stuff since 2015, because it makes our pigments look so beautiful. So when the, the class launched, I immediately sent her a bottle with our primary elements. And one little trick, she discovered that little bit of gel, heavy gel medium, plumps up the cells and we were fighting so hard with, you know, God, I hope it dries like this. God, I hope it dries like this. <laughs> you know, there's new bloomers in here. There's people just discovering fluid art techniques and may not even know what I mean by, you know, calling you guys a bloomer. But uh, uh, somebody just messaged your held for review. Somebody just mess held a review for Saskia's message. If you have the ability to 
make it stop, please do so, because I can't see anything that Saskia would say that we wouldn't want to see. You know, she's not going to put some bad message in there, but Saskia, your message was held for a review for some reason. Anyway, I get asked a lot, and uh, if you're interested in making customized cell activators out of things other than the Australian Floetrol, you know, we know one, we know that is tried and true. We know this stuff is different than America. We know that this has a higher insurance record of giving you great sellage or patterns if you want them. Um, Sheldon Briscoe, uh, that's the name of his channel, he's a chef and he'd experimented for m oh, many, it's because of a couple of years now because that class launched in 2018, of ways to modify things to work as a cell activator if you don't want to put the money out for the Australian flow trawl. But today I'm going to just take some colors and make other cell activators out of them. Uh, I am going to attempt to blow a bloom. I could not find my airbrush in practice, Saskia. Saskia does beautiful blooms on, uh, it looks like a dotting rock. You get the dotting tool mold, fill it up with concrete and plaster of Paris. She paints them uh, with the prison pour now, but you seal that plaster of Paris with something so it's got a nice seal on it. You can even seal it with varnish. Then she'll do a bloom on top of it. If you've gone to the other videos on my channel and start looking at the videos that are just, that are advertising a specific set, every one of those gorgeous mixing videos has been done by Saskia Smith. So we need to basically let her even know she's the one that does that technique. And she doesn't even worry about having a pillow down below because that, that, rock-shaped thing that she makes has the gravity, kind of like that convex canvas. And the purpose of the pillow is to give the paint some place to skitter across, move across, right? So, but when she's doing it on the rocks, it, uh, gravity automatically pulls it down, but she uses an airbrush and I'm apologizing to her. I don't know if she's got her sound on. Uh, she's managed to pull it off with an airbrush. In the days when I was doing my blooms, one of the bloomers in the class had discovered the turkey baster because people were trying to use straws. And at least with the turkey baster, you take off the bulb, your mouth will fit on one end where you get maximum air. And this gives you a way to do it old school, very old school, because that was like we were running around trying to find a better way to blow it because you're going <laughs> all over the place and the pain is going over, over, over the paint and through the rose, the ground of the house we go and then the paint goes under the white and comes up on the other side and then you lose half of your color, right? So uh, that's part of the frustration of some of these bloomers. And um, that brings up a story of a lady I spoke, a couple of ladies I spoke to the other day that just said, uh, sorry, I'm gonna get long-winded here, that they went out and got all the stuff to start their fluid project, came home, they thought for sure they had copied exactly what the YouTube artist had done, and then it didn't turn out how they planned. And one person actually said she just stuck it back in the drawer and says, this isn't for me. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I, uh, I uh, condiment bottle, that's an interesting idea, Audra. They just said, you know, paint porn's not for me. And then they saw another video that inspired them. And I think here's a challenge with the other, with YouTube artists. And people will say, well, I never get to see their mistakes. Okay. Uh, here, obviously, you're going to see my mistakes or what I'm doing in my journey trying to fix it. But if you put yourself in the shoe of the YouTube art, the shoes of the YouTube artists, they're, they're, told to focus either on a niche technique, like one particular technique over and over and over again, or they're told, watch out how long your videos go. You know, do I put my color mixing in the beginning or can, will I keep people's attention and put the color mixing at the end? Uh, uh, do I just show the colors? You know, the video should be six to 12 minutes. You know, if I show my fill and I scraped it, the video might be an hour. These are all the things going through their heads. The challenge, though, is for the viewer 
is they mostly see just successes. And then when you get home and try that technique and it doesn't work exactly like you saw it on YouTube and you're sure you use the same exact stuff and believe it or not, many times people aren't because it is a chemistry thing, they get discouraged. As a matter of fact, and then uh, the same lady said, eventually I pulled my color art. She goes, I'm a little surprised that people say color art's expensive. And I said, yeah, I know. There's many mica powders out there that are $8 a jar, $18 a jar, just for, uh, uh, just for, for a mineral that's been re repacked by a company in Asia and stuck a label on it. It wasn't anything handmade, but you know, that's what the market will bear right now. And I said, yeah, okay, so maybe the perception is that stuff expensive, but how expensive is it if you leave it in your drawer? Welcome, Gretchen. We see that you joined us. But how expensive is your toys if you leave them in the drawer or walk by and pet them on the shelf and you don't use them? then that's actually pretty darn expensive. What is it there for? It's a collection on the wall in place of the art on the wall. <laughs> your pain is your art? No? And I know most, I'm speaking to the choir here because a lot of people have heard this story, but, but this thing with YouTube, everybody's kind of challenged of timing, presentation, content. Are they gonna keep your attention? Um, and then the, the YouTube artists go, some of them go through quite a bit to reset their stage up. Like, so, oh my goodness, we've got another new person here, Art on Canvas by Millie. So we've got some new people here. This is so exciting. So um, a lot of people have questioned why I haven't done the bloom on camera. Um, so funny story, after I sent that uh, a sample of our base and pigments to um, the lady who launched the class, she was all excited, wanted to place an order, and actually sold my product for quite a while uh, until after COVID started to wane a little bit. And then they, she kind of switched to her own line but uh, she'd asked me, because she, she could tell her students, please don't share what you learned in the class. And again, it's still, it's, a, it's an honor code thing. Someone could, could have still shared it. But she actually flat out asked me, how long do I have until you show it? And uh, I said a year, which I think was a mistake. Uh, but I wanted to give the person who had created content and a class content to get a chance to get paid for all her work because she did spend a couple of years working on that technique. When you went to Instagram and you kept seeing photos of what she was doing, she, people would say, I wanna buy that. She goes, but it doesn't dry like this. I can, I can sell you a photo of it, a print, but it's not ready yet. So many of us in the art community were waiting since probably 2018 for that class to launch. Uh, can I search the word airbrush? Yeah, Saskia does use an airbrush. Uh, well, you're right, Catherine. They're reasonably priced, but you don't want to waste them. Here's, don't have an anxiety attack over using them. It is just color. And the beautiful thing is they are so extremely concentrated, you're gonna get a lot of banks for your buck. Practice, practice, practice. But the most important thing is just open them up and do something with them, even if it's just creating a color chart, you know. Now, this is not a good representation, but you could take a piece of paper, um, I have it here somewhere, and then take tape or create lines, create grid lines or do whatever it is. But as soon as you get your products, when you have time, obviously, and it doesn't matter who products you're getting, do a little swatch test, practice with your colors, get to know what you've ordered. Let your body feel the joy of this. And when I say that is many of you are probably aware that color is very healing or color has a lot of effect on our dopamine, serotonin, um, 
What's the other one? Endorphins. There's one that looks like oxytocin. It's not like the drug, but there's like four different hormones and chemicals that are released by using color. I'm not sure what just happened, but I just got a notification that my phone is low on juice and it was 100% when I moved over here. So you're gonna have to bear with me one more time. I'm not quite sure how we're gonna do this, but I gotta get some juice onto this phone. So I will be right back. Give me about 30 seconds to go get it. I just need my plug. So I charged my phone all night long, so this doesn't happen. And when I walked over here, it was 100%. And for, for me to get a 20% warning that's low is not good. So, not sure if you guys even heard what I just said. Yes, Judy, I don't know if she's on yet, but I do have that lapel mic I'm going to start using soon, I promise. Yeah, I might have to replace my phone because it was 100%, I made sure, and it shouldn't be giving us a hard time. What have you been getting? Your bling goes away when it dries. On what, sweetheart? Which product and which bling? Vivid Intense, yes. Yes, Vivid Intense can go into lacquer. It can go into lacquer. So can the Purely Pigments. Just so make sure that everybody's got those questions answered. So my apologies for that. Uh, I had to go get a cord and plug myself in and I just had my phone 100%, so I apologize. Anyway, so uh, I gave her a year. Yes, I remembered where I was at. But I went and I looked up some of my old blooms I did when uh, the class launched. Now these were made in the first two weeks, there's about a hundred of them in this rack over here. And I threw about a hundred away. Why I saved these, I don't know. I'm sure you guys are, some of you might be just as bad as me. You know, I have this hoarding issue. <laughs> but uh, I'm just gonna show you a little bit about the whole bloom thing. Those of you that don't know what a bloom is. So, uh, you can tell that this was done. There was a lot of interference. Any art takes practice. Images by Gretchen, yeah. Yeah, exactly, Gretchen, you're right. Uh, so uh, this has a lot of interference. You can tell I put the interference right up underneath the cell activator. These were literally done. This is, I did, I went through a whole series playing with that, um, Golden had a fluorescent red or, or some deep base paint, uh, media, yeah, deep base paint. Of course, now we have all those fluorescence in the vivid intense, but at the time I was playing with this, I, we're all hoarders, but I did a whole series. Let me see if I can get the camera down so you can see these. I did a whole series in that color. But then look, we were learning about flocu flocculation. If you could see here in some of these patterns where you see some of that gray in there, we were trying to experiment by not using regular Australian Floetrol. 
we were using an oil-based uh, wood conditioner in there and it created a little of this flocculation in the where the black and the white hit. So many experiments that we were going through to try to get it to work. So here's another one, same color combination as this one where I had put the interference under the black. So I just want you guys to know that I actually did go down the rabbit hole of the blooms, okay? But I had promised her, I had promised her a year, right? That's a long time to not practice it. Here's one where I love the color combination so much, I actually resin this one. All right, and I probably the cell activator. Um, it was probably a white cell activator, but I love, look at all that interference green that was in there. I really went down this crazy road of using lots and lots of interferences layered in between my colors to do the bloom. Here's one I used the interferences on, but it has not been uh, varnished yet. No. So uh, there's a lots of possibilities. This is just, I don't know why I pulled this out, but it had kind of a crazy pattern to it. It looked like I tried to varnish this one. That's not resin on there. Looks like I tried to varnish this one. But again, all those interferences, I really went nuts with the interferences on my blooms, which we're gonna play with some interferences today. I do have some of those colors I've mixed up for my past swipes, so we're gonna use some of that because we know they'll, and here's just a real subtle one. It didn't come out like the perfect bloom, but I don't mind that this is monochromatic, right? This is actually kind of, and I was so proud that I, I think this is a 10 by 10 that I could get, you know, the 10 by 10 to show up like this. Now this is varnished, that is not resin. And I'm loving just, uh, I had a hard time doing them. You had a hard time on the small surfaces? Well, that's interesting because when I was doing, um, oh, I don't think I have a lid here. When I was doing these little itty bitty ones, darn, do I have a cap to show you? Um, okay. Okay, this is the lid off of this, but I have a, I had a bunch of these. I bought a bunch of these lids that are the same size as this that you use for soup, takeout soup, right? And what I did is I used this as my palette and I put the let me put this down here so you can see what I did. When I was really trying to practice this, I had three and four inch canvases, these little three by threes. And what I did is I put them in here, ladled the paint on, put the color on, blew it with my mouth. If I didn't like it, I could scrape it and do another one and leave it in here. And I just practiced over and over and over again in these lids. And it's just, when you're doing small practices, the first thing you're trying to do is make sure the chemistry is correct. Do I have the correct amount of deep base or enamel? Do I have the right amount of varnish? Is my cell activator got the right paint? Am I using Golden or Amsterdam? Do I have enough of the Australian Floetrol in there to get there? Is my white paint too thick? Why is it bubbling up? There was all these things we were worried about. And so testing it in a small little thing like this really helped. I mean, that's how I did these little ones is I took cut takeout soup lids to practice on before I did the bigger ones. Okay. So, uh, and incidentally, this is just a feast for your eyes. This is not a bloom, but this is a swipe I ran across this morning. Um, I'm an old school swiper and I used silicone at the time in my paint and in 17 we were just covering the whole base with paint and swiping over it and uh look at the beautiful spots and droplets that popped up where the silicone hit the paint that uh hit paint that didn't have silicone and you get this reaction but 
We'll play with this type of swiping next week because we're going to try blooming today and with this cell activator. But when I ran across this, I just had to show this off because I loved all these little droplets that formed, right? Anyway, I don't know what you guys, you're talking about something being loose. Hard time doing them. I'm scared to go to big canvases. No, they're not cheap. So like I said, Janelle, you start on little things like this, and then people graduated to tiles. Now, this is a much bigger tile than most of them used. I, uh, I dug through my whole house this morning, and I couldn't buy the four, find the four by four or six by inch tiles, but Janelle, a lot of people started small, and then... Uh, they jump to four and six inch tile. Now, you can get a box of tiles for about 25, about 25 bucks. They're about a dollar a piece. See you later, John. Hugs and kisses, talk to you later. Um, I know he's busy with his art show that he's got going on. Make lots of money. <laughs> so, uh, Janelle, you might also try a tile because uh, right, because a tile has a real rigid surface and when you're putting the paint on there, it's only gonna go up to a certain level where a canvas will allow the paint to build up and your color can go up underneath. You have a less chance of that happening when you're working on a tile. All this does is practicing on tiles gives you the confidence get you comfortable with the blowing, get you comfortable with how that, how that paint scooters ac across the surface. Because the goal of having a pillow or some kind of flood coat on the bottom was so it would, it would move. You wanna paint to move because the rule of thumb is resin, whether it's resin or acrylic paint, it's gonna go where other paint has gone. It follows it, right? So, but a tile, that's not a bad place for you to practice at all, Janella. And if you have them, that's great. Anybody thinking about them, they're a lot cheaper than buying canvases right now. And, uh, of course, <laughs> then what do you do with all of them? Now, some of them, I had this crazy idea. Maybe someday, maybe somebody's already running with it. But I had some beautiful tiles that all sort of had a similar family history, right? And I had this idea of uh, mounting it, like maybe in one of those walk-in showers that's got the two wall, two shower heads and three walls, and maybe one of the walls is nothing but beautiful decorative tiles that have been resined over because it, once it's resined, it's waterproof. Or maybe some cool decorative tiles with turtles or stuff, uh, uh, turtles or other animals on them. I have a big turtle here that I painted uh, well, that's right. I still have my turtle here. Uh, maybe mounted on the top of a kid's uh, bathtub, right? Yeah, he was uh, drawn on the tile and hand painted. That's why I got these tiles. Here, let me turn this over. No, we're not doing this today either. But I brought, I brought up the idea of taking a tile and mounting it. Imagine if you had like a series of maybe three of these just mounted in the wall above the, the kids' bathroom where they're taking a, taking a bath because once it's resined, it's waterproof. Um, I did this by using resin art mixed with alcohol as a base and kind of got an alcohol ink effect on the base. Then I drew uh, an outline. Oh, you want him? God, I did him years ago. You really want, If you really want him, Sandy, we can talk. You know, I should be auctioning off my stuff before I move. Yeah, he's real cute, and he's just, he, I might, I would probably have to sand him a little bit here and make sure he's get resin. But then what I did is I drew in everything with a white Posca pen. This has all been painted with primary elements on top and then resined on top of it. Oh, you do? Yeah, I took, I'm so proud of this. I actually took this design off Pinterest on my phone, put it on grid paper, and counted out how many grids over left and right to where the tip of the little thingy would go. 
or, you know, the tip over here. So I measured in my grids. And I will tell you, turtles are probably the easiest thing to draw and paint because they already have a prehistoric feel to them. I mean, turtles really do kind of have that prehistoric look. So he kind of has a little realism to him. If you really want them, sand, maybe I should do another. You know, I should. if you guys like this idea, I can do another one. It would be fun to do this. I'd have to find my pattern for him. What are you going to order, Sherry? Uh, oh, yeah, the littlest small blow, blow dry in the world. <laughs> anyway, my point is tiles... Uh, I was like, what do I do with the tiles after I'd created all these tiles, right? Oh. <laughs> I may have to repaint him. You're so sweet. You know what? I have never sold one thing. I would love to do an elephant. I, I love to paint paint, like brush paint paint. That's why you guys saw me playing with my watercolors. Incidentally, from yesterday's piece, I just had to say there was some real insane runoff of the resin and man I, I said while it's still soft I wanted to cut it up and think about using these as uh, textural components on another canvas because there's our runoff is pretty I don't know where that came from I think it's because there was the big thumbtack that was on the bottom of the board and it formed that little thing okay I guess I'm wasting everybody's time sorry about that so this is just a practice dartboard. We're gonna practice some cell activators on. Then we're gonna do a piece here. Uh, I'm on the fence whether I should be doing a black base or not. You know, after playing around with my turtle, I'm not sure if I wanna do a black base on this bloom I'm gonna try. But I will do uh, something here. So let's make some custom cell activators. This is what I had in mind today. I already have one I had made with the uh, Amsterdam Titanium White and then my papaya. So I made this peach last time for you guys. I want to somehow use this if it makes sense, okay? But if I wanted to customize a cell activator today, only because I know the color art does not make the proper base chemistry. Do We don't have the chemistry in any of our paints that shares with the Amsterdam. I don't have any golden up here. So this is Amsterdam titanium white already mixed with the Floetrol. This is just some of the Amsterdam teal squeezed in here. So I could modify either one of these with my colors and make a cell activator out of them. Now the question is, <laughs> which color combination am I gonna use? Same thing all you guys go through when we're deciding what we're gonna do. Now, I already have kind of a pinky color, so we don't need that. Um, I could make this a darker aqua, but for the fun of it, I'm going to put a, I think I'm going to put my a red violet in this because it, that would be unexpected. So this should turn it kind of a tertiary purple when I put that in there. And then if I want to make a, uh, I did the lime green last time. So I kind of want a, maybe this color cell activator mixed with a tiny bit of the saffron. I don't know. So much of this is intuitive painting, you guys. So <laughs> you're probably like, doesn't she have this all planned and written out in advance? Nope, none of these lives, even the color theory one. The other day I did write yellow and how many spots of green in each thing, but it didn't quite work out as I thought. But I thought maybe I need to pre-plan what I'm going to say to you guys because eventually you're going to go, you're repeating content or <laughs> we already heard you say that or whatever it might be. Let's get some mixing sticks here. I need to replenish all my little mixing supplies and sticks here. Getting down to the bottom of my bin. So 
my gut is to put the flow trowel first. So this, cause this already has the flow trowel in it. I'm gonna have to make this into a cell activator. That looks like, uh, I'd say about a tablespoon to me. Sorry, I'm looking for a larger measuring spoon. This is a teaspoon. That looks like it's not a tablespoon. That looks like it's a little bit more than a teaspoon. So it's normally three to one. Some people, I know Kathleen McGee and Justin Sally swear by four to one. Two, three, four, But this is how I would be customized a cell activator. You're not going to be able to just put this directly in the flow trawl. You might get an interesting effect, like cells or something, but you're not going to get, uh, you're not going to make a cell activator. I know I'm saying cells. You might get some globules that will form, right? Because the flow trawl that's in whatever you make is going to react with what's around it. Good job, Cindy. She got her flow call ordered. But actually being sure that it's going to work as a cell activator over and over and over again, there's no guarantee. Now, I have this is very liquidy, so I'm going to take my time to mix this up. Should really be in a larger cup. Yeah, sweetheart. Saskia, is, is her rock videos, again, there's a gazillion videos on our actual regular video feed. Saskia created all the mixing videos for our company. Primary Elements, Prism Pour, she does a superb job. She uses a, a, an airbrush, which I will eventually get unpacked. I have one here. Okay, but she is the bomb on, on those rocks. And from my understanding, that plaster Paris concrete sets up in about 45 minutes. She pulls them out and then just lets them air dry for, what, 24, 48 hours. She'll probably give you the best time for it. But she can make a whole bunch of those rocks in advance. And they make great paperweights. Not a bad idea at all for gifts that you might want to sell in a shop. They're beautiful. They're gorgeous. They don't take very much material to make. Okay, so I'm gonna customize my cell activator. This is the first time playing with our, uh, the red violet. This is in set two. And again, yesterday the name escaped me. I was gonna go look it up for this morning. I'm so sorry. I'm gonna go two drops, really vivid and tense, would have what we would have used before. Now this is gonna be really strong, so be prepared. Look at that. Uh-oh. Okay, are you seeing what I'm seeing? Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Somebody respond, because I'm not stirring. Look at the cells that it's forming right in the darn cup. Oh my God, Saskia. Look at this. All they did was drop the purely pigment in this thing. What the heck? Sweetie, this is just, this, I've just made a cell activator out of the, this, and this. And then all I did was add two drops of this Wow, I have no, I mean, I'm going to have to mix that up, but I'm now wondering about maybe dropping a drop of this stuff. Do that again, right? Do that again, right? I was just trying to tone this color down. Now, remember, it's very opaque, so it didn't really change the color that much. That's even crazier. 
this is, oh God, I have to wonder what the heck is in that bottle. This is my lab sample. <laughs> okay, do that again, she says. Okay, well, we'll do that again since it, I think it toned it probably a little bit. It, I think it's looking more blue. I, I, probably what it did here, it took some of the green out. This looks green, this looks more blue. So the first step of putting that violet in there, it turned this blue green from a green blue, right? Well, no, well, no, I'm gonna, I've got these colors that are gonna go in the white. They'll go in there, I'm gonna do them next after I do this. But because I'm questioning what's in this, I wanna grab the pure magenta, you find that bottle here and see if it does the same thing. We've got a, this is, boy, this is an interesting experiment here. I just want to see if it sells up or if there's something in my lab sample that makes it to where it won't happen for you guys. Wow. I've never seen that happen before. <laughs> This is the fun of experimenting live and seeing what happens. Okay, so now this is a quinacridone magenta. It's not quite as much of a red violet. Two colors. Now, what I did is all I did was give it one little stir and it started creating these crazy cells. Oh, there we go. Something's happening. There's something happening here. Wow. <laughs> anyway, it's making my cell activator more blue. I know it's probably hard to tell because the it's a very subtle change in my cell activator. But this was a green blue, and now this is a blue blue. Uh, cheapest. Well, if you buy it directly off of the reseller on eBay who ships it from Australia, uh, he may be the cheapest. Depends on who's got it on sale. Everybody is stuck with trying to buy it from the Floetrol company in Australia, and they're they're kind. Of, I you don't know how many times many of us have tried to contact them directly, and got no there nowhere. Uh, this color is actually not dark enough, so uh, I'm going to actually change the color in this. I know I went with a pink. I was trying to get more of a tertiary color. This is sort of a dull blue. I actually want a real dark blue. We need some pop here. So uh, let's go all in and add the pure fallow blue. And this is called azure blue. I'm gonna go all in and just turn this into a blue, blue, two. I'm adding three drops here and let's see what happens. Part of the reason why it's taking so much color is when probably when they made that green blue, there's a little bit of white in this mixture for them. Yeah, because it's taken a lot of color to tone it down. If I had to guess, there's titanium white in that color because it's taken a lot more. That was two drops. One, two, three more drops just to get it to a blue. Pyra, oh, you didn't miss much. <laughs> Other than we made weird cells in this activator couple, I was trying to make some a cell activator. Wow, look at that. Now it's really changed from this color to this color. Yeah. And again, that may or may not work because let me tell you, I'm, I'm stressing, these are the colors already got mixed up. I've got a yellow... I've got, these are all the colors we used last week. And it was part of Sarah Taylor's piece and part of the one we did on that white canvas. Looks like I've got, uh, 
a couple interference combo mixes, one with gold and one with violet in here. You can see the violet in here. So I'm not sure if this blue is going to meet me where I need those colors to go as far as a cell activator. We may not use this, but you've seen me mix it, right? And that's kind of the most important thing is I used an existing paint that we know is guaranteed to work, whether it's the white or a color. I've toned it down with the Purely Pigments. And I'm going to have to find a little cap here. I guess I'm going to steal. I'll steal a cap from one of the colors. I'm hoping we end up using all of it. Interference, I'm pretty sure we will. I just want to keep this fresh because I've had this piece sitting around here, so I'll faint. I'll have some color combination that's gonna go with this blue later on in the future, but I'm not gonna get all stressed about it now. <laughs> I can't believe Sandy wants to buy my turtle. That's really sweet of you. Maybe I should be painting more turtles. <laughs> Speaking of that, right now, before we get going, I try to wait for the middle thing of it right now. Yeah, and then also she mentioned Fluid Art Co. There's also Pixel Paint. There's also Becky Selman. Um, sometimes their prices are the same. Sometimes there's a better deal. I think it just fluctuates just like anything else. So, uh, okay, so a little bit of business just because everybody's on now. Uh, the 20% off the 40% stock up 40 code is going to die somewhere tonight between tomorrow night. And why I don't have a specific time is I've set it when I normally set a date, the website wants to do it 24 hours earlier. It has to do with a time clock that uh, I think is generated from the actual WordPress software. So I'll set a date about a day beyond that. So sometime tonight to tomorrow night, that 40% code stock up 40 is going to go away. I'm grateful to the eight people. We got eight people that joined us for the uh, membership drive yesterday. We are literally this far away from our goal to get the funding that we need to reorganize the warehouse, bring in the twinks, get me moved because I have to move and the rent at the building tripled. So we are doing this. And also as reorganizing the company, when we started getting into that 20%, 20%, 20%, that happened after we had a tragedy in our business and we lost one of our employees to the pandemic. And uh, we got a ca caught in that merry-go-round. Well, we get our refinancing. That's not going to happen. That's why this membership drive is so important. We're going to have two programs, and I don't mean to confuse people, in May, there'll be a perks reward points program based on your purchases. So you're gaining uh, maybe a gift card, okay? And uh, that great Mandy. Oh, good, Mandy's got a pixel painting. So we're going to, good, think, good to see Mandy here. Uh, Mandy, I thought you were at an event this weekend because I really need to talk to you. So I may be calling you after this if you've got time. Anyway, uh, we're going to do a loyalty point program or for a friend, uh, uh, sign up and register. Uh, you get a gift card based on how much you purchase. And we're going to offer shaving off a few points of everything you buy. You won't become a regular customer. You might be customer number one. We're... Uh, how close are we? $12,000 in sales away. That could be a good, strong week, guys. $12,000 away. That's what we need. And we're done. We're completely done. And uh, fortunately, you know, they have a certain, <laughs> they've got all these goals set for it to trigger this whole thing. Anyway, uh, the second phase, and we've already started it, is a Art of Club membership. Now, we've got the Art of Club Facebook group on Facebook that you can go join. Anybody can join. It's a brand new group. We're small and mighty. It's a safe place to share your art. And I think on Tuesday, Kathleen said 12 people signed up just from the live. Oh, yeah, the membership drive's still on. 
we're, we're, we're selling those membership cards. And then, uh, so uh, there's an art of, I don't want to get distracted, you know, so I'm closing my eyes so I can't see what everybody's asking me right now. So this is the Art of Color Facebook page. It's free. I just created the Art of Color Club Facebook page. I've got to find you guys and make sure I can pull you in or invite you in. It's for the members who are part of the club. Um, and those of you that are on a budget, don't worry. After April, we'll come up with some sort of monthly program that people can go in monthly. And based on your purchases, you can earn your way into the tiers. We're not going to leave everybody out. And Mandy, I am actually going to pick your brain on how to organize this thing. She is some high mucky mucky at Chase, and she's brilliant. And I know she can help me figure out this whole system so everybody gets a reward and every one of our affiliates are going to benefit from this. The affiliate codes will probably drop to 10%, uh, but that actually means you're going to end up putting more money in their pocket, right? You're not a peasant. She's brilliant and smart and beautiful, and I really weigh on her uh, advice. She's got real good advice when it comes to stuff. Don't let her fool you. So, uh, so the membership drive right now, we're currently going for founding members. Uh, the $500 card is 41%. It's based on 40% off. You buy it for $295. You get a $500 card to buy products. It's for products only. You still have to pay your freight. Uh, there's a $750 card for four something. There's an $1,000 card for five something because it goes 41, 42, 43%. And there is one person in the live, and I'm not going to give her name out, but she's the one that sort of set the price for the 50% off card, uh, $3,000 card for $1,500. And we are getting close. Everybody who gets in now is grandfathered in at a top tier, no matter what your purchasing uh, level is. You're all going to be grandfathered in as the founding members. And we are having a sampling program. When you go to check out, there'll be a button. It's probably going to be April, May. There'll be a button for you to push that says, hi, I'm part of the Art of Color uh, sampling program. Boom. And why you do that is it prints a line in the invoice that tells the shipper, hey, send me the one of the month, right? One of the month. And set, or not of the week, send me the sample of the week. Because if you order every week, you're going to be on that sampling program every week, right? Uh there will be discount codes based on the tiers that people get into. So that everyday price, it's 5 to 10%. That's all that the public is going to see. A recreational buyer is going to see 5 or 10% on the top. People that are already in the membership program, and again, we're going to try. I already had people ask me to create an entry-level one um, as soon as this hard drive is over, where we're, we're as soon as we get our capital uh, because we want to, again, we want to make this fair for everybody. We're searching for a software that's also going to track your purchases. So there is a way to uh, reward you based on what you're buying also through this and keep pushing you up to the highest tier. There will be some private lives, uh, lives like this, but it's going to be eventually, we're going to eventually... I just have to work on my timing and after I move and see if I can carve all this out, I think we should have one actual formal class a week dedicated to the color mixing. I hate the term color theory because it makes me seem like I'm an expert and I know something more than everybody else. I'm just sharing with you what I've learned for the past 29 years doing this and the 70 years of being on this earth and uh, I'm here to help everybody. So there is going to be uh, uh, dedicated lives to the color mixing every week. Uh, maybe somebody can join through Patreon if they want to do that. And maybe that's, you know, that's their comfort zone. Maybe they're not comfortable buying it on the, the website. Thank you so much for saying I'm an expert. I did, if nobody knows that, I am the creator of all the color art products and your host at Color Play Live three days a week. There's my little spiel and I did make all of these products. And I think the next step in my life is to use them all and to keep exploring why I made them and what I had in mind. Because if you haven't figured it out yet, uh, 
my philosophy has been for the past 28 years, find something that's never been done before. Like when I made the primary elements, I was so frustrated that uh, my favorite blue had a skim on the top of the thing and, and I couldn't even find that paint. And I'm like, my gosh, you know, how could I put color and sparkle in a jar and, and uh, put this in any kind of clean up water soluble media and still have some kind of coloring system that I could give to my great grandkids if I wanted to. This stuff is good to the very last little grain. There is no shelf life in this stuff. So this was my first jump out the venture 21 years ago. Why are people's messages being retracted? Somebody's messing with our live guys. I need to make somebody a next time. I don't know, Saskia, if you have the power to be the admin, I need to make one of you guys my admin so we can fix this thing because I'm noticing what's happening. But my point was primary elements was my very first venture of making something that never been done before, right? I wanted a dry paint system. This is not a mica powder. While it might have a mineral base in it, you put this in water, it's gonna be a brilliant purple, you know? Then there was, uh, in between that, I think I made the prism pour. Uh, I wanted to make a deep base paint. There's never been a deep base paint on the market. One that literally the base is already made with the deep base. All you add to do is add varnish and this sucker's gonna bloom for you. Nobody's done that yet. And by the way, the prism pour has so many minerals per teaspoon we know you're gonna thin it down by 50%. And one of the easiest ways to do it is just grab your polypora enamel because it shares pretty much the same base. Um, then it was the resin art. Then it was, now vivid intense fluid acrylics have been done before, but nobody's ever made anything like the purely pigment. So if you're following my pattern here, I'm trying to find the holes that I think are in the marketplace, something that I might want to play with and bulldoze our way in there and find what else can be done. How come, why not, what if? And to me, it's always been about the what if. Yeah, I know, Catherine, uh, that master primary element set is $3,900 if you count up. That's the suggested retail. Right now, it's 1,700 bucks. That's a, I know it's a lot of money, but you get the master set. But there's other master sets. There's a, yeah, thinking out of the box. It's exactly what Priya said, thinking out of the box. Why do you think we've got Daniel Cooper, and I'm throwing his name out there. He's experimenting with all kinds of resin things. You know, how did the bloom technique come out? Somebody pushing the, and as a matter of fact, yes, Gretchen, if you go back and look at the video, it was about a week and a half ago when I was playing with look like these watercolors on camera. And uh, interesting you should ask that because we are bringing back our Twinkling H2O watercolors. And uh, they will be back. This is a sample of what we used to make. I have had 144 in the line. We are bringing them back. And so on the video, you're going to see a photo that looks like a whole bunch of jars that are a little bit bigger than these. In that video, I take the Purely Pigments and a little bit, little bit of the gum arabic that we offer. It's a food-grade, water, instantly water-dissoluble water gum arabic. I mix it with the Purely Pigments, and it worked beautifully. So, yes, it can be done. So, anyway, there's the business. The stock up 40, you got about... Yeah, yeah, put corn syrup in your water when you're making your watercolor and it acts as a natural humescent. When you wet the cake, it'll stay wetter if you're gonna do that, if you're gonna make your own. And then also another little trick, put a tablespoon of glycerin in your water bucket, if you had one of these things. And the glycerin actually just helps the paint kind of glide a little bit better over uh over your piece, so, oh, I, that's what we're here for, we're here to help. Okay, so there's the business, there's the thing about the membership program, there's more to that. We've got the sampling program, the special discounts, we're gonna do the private live, 
uh, in the Art of, uh, Art of Color Club Facebook group, we should be able to pull off some live Q and A's. Bring some people in. You might have some questions. One like Becky Selman, who uh, has her new store. I think it's in Tennessee. I might have the wrong state. And she's fooling around with the mix. Why not bring her in and see what she's doing? You know, I want to do some live Q and A's. That's outside of just all about me. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, the H two O is going in production. That's why we're doing the cards now. I couldn't do a pre-order in them because we've got to get the building reorganized, get them poured. It takes at least 14 days once they're poured to set up. So, uh, but I am going to release the ones I found in my garage. I have to get someone over here to help me. I'm hoping Michelle D's grand, granddaughter may come help me. Get all these tubs out of my garage and find out what I've got and uh, maybe send some of those samples out as part of the sampling program to the founding members. You know, if you get an extra big pot of watercolor in your box one day, you're going to know that it came from me out in my garage watercolors when we poured those big 30 mil jars. Okay, so let's get back. I'm going to try to make this white cell activator. Uh, this is the challenge, okay, by trying to make white into a color. We have to use a lot of that. I know, Catherine, I would, so many of you guys have said you'd love to come and help. I wish you were my neighbors. We could have a copy clutch in the morning and then paint all day, right? That would be fun here. Okay, so let's get to some cell activating. I kind of want to, I'm hoping to get to kind of a Nicoazzo gold color. So I know that it's kind of silly to not use that. I avoid this. I'm in Fresno, California. Gretchen, where are you? I know. Coffee clutch. If I can move to a big enough house, maybe we can have classes there. So here's one little thing about the golden nickel. It is the pure color that makes your nickel as a gold. But the color is quite thick. I'm trying to find a paintbrush here to help me get this off. It's quite thick. And I've had people say there was something wrong with it. I said, actually, no, there wasn't that much. There's the same amount of the uh, uh, material put in there to get it to pour. The problem is the stuff that makes it's really, really strong. And so uh, this is my original batch, which is pretty thick. I believe we've added a tiny bit more to it, but you know what? I'd rather have it be thick and you have more color and then thin it down by 10% and I've washed some of the color out. So I'm going right to, God, which probably looks like one, two, three, four. I probably have six drops in here plus what's on the edge. I know you're probably going to want to see what this looks like. This is a color called golden nickel. <laughs> now it's kind of interesting. Look how it's reacting. I kind of, I should take pictures of that and, and make a photograph of it because I'm loving how it's reacting in that cell. Oh my God, it's doing it again. Look guys, look what's happening. Okay, someone needs to experiment with this technique. We need to figure out why this is happening. Saskia, you and I need to put our heads together. Look at this. It's doing it again. It's creating these crazy cells. I, I don't even know how to explain this phenomenon that's happening. It's kind of nutsy. But because this is white, it's going to take quite a bit of color to get to where we want to be. So I'm going to add some of my saffron, which is a really bright red-orange. We have the saffron in the prism pour. There's two drops of that. I don't know how, how deep i got to go to get to the color I'm looking for. And then I've got some of this Aztec yellow, which is quickly becoming one of my favorite colors. There's two drops of that. Ooh. Ooh, that looks like four drops of Aztec yellow went in there. Let's be fair with what we're doing. Oh, sure. Why not thin it down and use it like a watercolor ink? Absolutely. 
oh my, I just can't believe what's happening when I'm doing that. We almost need to have a technique where the base is cell activator and then we just spin it around and see what happens. I still, I want, I'm, I, 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 I'm not exactly sure if this is gonna go because I got a couple oranges up here. But if it was really red or red orange, see if I went lime green, everybody'd see it. If this was a cell activator, everybody would be thrilled with it. That's actually what that color of that Amsterdam was to begin with, but I was trying to show you guys how to make your own cell activator. That's not a bad color. I think I wanted a couple shades darker. I'm gonna have to do the old flick it technique. Just kind of tap it off because it's so thick. Bye, Hope! Take care of that beautiful grandson of yours. I hope, oh, I hope Arlo's doing well. You have a beautiful day, honey. Thank you. I know, I'm taking time. It's already been 71 minutes and all I've been doing is talking. One, two, three more. That was four. I'm just trying to get this darker and darker. One, two, three, four. So it's about four, four, and four if we're keeping track. Right, that titanium dioxide is going to fight with what we're trying to do. There we go. That's not bad. Sort of a pumpkin color. It's not a bad color. Of course, we got this little peach. Now it looks very namby-pamby. <laughs> By the way, I also have black and white. So we don't have to worry about if we've got plenty of cell activator here to play with. So uh, the one thing about working on tiles, uh, you don't have to put much of a base coat down. Now there was a, if I can find it, there was a base coat that uh, Sarah Taylor used and I ended up using it. I'll pull these guys off. Uh, that was made out of um, Dick Blick white, some GAC, and some of our enamel, okay? So I'm going to try that with this first one. I'm just getting these. Did Judy Sand join us? Hey, fairy art mothers here, guys. Fairy art mother is in the room. We're mixing up. Look at all that sparkle that's subtle on the bottom of this little guy. I think this was Pineapple Crush. That is such a pretty color in there. This is some Snapdragon Pineapple Crush. I'm going to leave that spoon for both of them. This is... I know one was fennel flower. I might have used fennel flower in both of them because I got another one that looks pretty darn similar. But look how beautiful that's stored on there. This is our vivid enamel varnish, primary element fennel flower. Somebody keeps restricting messages. What is going on? YouTube don't do that. Let's see if this looks the same, because I have a tendency to love using fennel flower a lot. Okay, this is not as sparkly. I'll save this as a backup, but I like this one better. I like how sparkly and gorgeous that is. Let's save that as backup. I think this was the Blissful Bordeaux because I know that's the color I used in uh, the Sarah Taylor piece. You put gesso on your tile. That's an interesting way to do it. But that wouldn't that create more tooth for the paint to grab? I mean, is that the point of adding that on there? Because you're kind of creating tooth with gesso, aren't you? I'm just saying, it's possible. Uh, 
This is, looks like this is an interference violet with some sparkle in it. And it's just that today's about using up all of our leftover paint. Save all these caps. I can reuse those plastic caps. I'm pretty sure this is the interference gold. And then there is this, I believe this is jasmine. But don't we want the paint to glide? Do you want, now if I was trying to brush paint on a tile, fortunately when I did my turtle, this is not sparkly enough. We're gonna add more sparkle to this one. Let's beef this one up because this deserves a little bit more sparkle to it. Uh, the house paint, I mean the, uh, God, what are you guys talking about here? The tooth can help if you're trying to get something to adhere to the surface, right? But in the case of a bloom, don't we want it to glide? I think I'm gonna add blue to this. I like what Interference Blue does to my pinks. Um, hello? Yeah, um, why, is there a Medina, Texas? I didn't know there was a Medina, Texas. We are so fortunate to have her here. She's doing quilt shows, uh, Mandy. All the quilt shows, and she's been showing purely pigments on black fabric. You guys need to like connect. They're right there. She's doing beautiful work. Yeah. I'm so stinking proud of her. Technically, you're talking to a new affiliate. I haven't formally announced her, but she does have a code to promote us at trade shows. Uh, and then uh, uh, we're going to, I'm looking for my other blue. There's the interference, here's the sparkle. Uh, I'm not sure when she's ready to do video content, but maybe someday she can join us on our quarterly events. By the way, the next quarterly event is at the end of April. So mark your dates. We'll be running, reminding you more about it. And if you guys are new to us and don't know about that, is every quarter our affiliates kind of show off their stuff. We all get together. It's now a two-day event, so it doesn't have to be one long day. You have 12 days to watch all the videos. And while you're watching them, we're going to give you a secret word or two clue in the video. Collect those secret word or two and enter the guess at the secret phrase after the time is over when you got 12 days to watch them. And someone will win a $400 shopping spree. As a matter of fact, Sherry Ellis, who is in here, was the very first person to ever win our uh, shopping spree. Yeah, I put more varnish in this. This is looking really, really thick. A galaxy pour. Those are so much fun. Yeah, this is way, way, way too thick compared to the rest of these. Sorry, guys. I had to kind of take a little segue here. All right. One other thing I really wanted to do is... Uh, I know I need to get on with this, is... Instead of doing a black base, I actually want to mix up a black that I can lay down first and lay my colors on top of. So uh, here's that other Titan teal that I, we had mixed up as a mix. That's also just a little bit thick. So I'm going to make a little bit of a handmade black to put down on the bottom of it. And it hopefully, when it spins, it should take the place of me not having a black house paint. So, uh, incidentally, when I plugged in my phone, I had to unplug the littlest leaf blower in the world. So I'm gonna have to try to blow this manually because we now have the phone plugged in. And I'm sorry, the juice for you guys to see me 
do this is way more important than the littlest leaf blower in the world. I don't know. That's a hard choice to make. So, all right. So I'm going to make a little bit of a black for myself. How I'm going to do that is I'm going to take some of the Vivid Polypore. And this cup actually has a measurement on the side. So it's got the one, two, and three ounces on here. Um, I'm going to make up three ounces. Wow, I've had this bottle of polypour for several years. <laughs> you know, everybody thinks I have a bunch of fresh stuff, and, you know, I'm like you guys. I get my stuff, and then I use it up. So, like I said, this bottle's probably from three years ago. And then uh, it's uh, an actual measurement. I mean, I can start with a teaspoon of this stuff, of the Vivid Intense Black. But remember, I also have my Purely Pigment Black. And I'm looking for the bottle right here because I had it set aside. So if this doesn't look black enough to me, I can do something. Well, that's pretty black. That's not bad at all. Uh, till you use it to the last drop. Just like any other acrylic, you take care of it, keep it stored in a in an area that doesn't get too cold or too hot. It'll last you for years, honey, till you use it up, just like any acrylic. But if your top is not put on correctly, or we can go all through the things that affects acrylic paint then you're affecting your shelf life. So I keep them in a cool dry, cool, dry place. There is no, I'm putting varnish in this just like I would any of my other paint because I want this to react to the cell activators we're putting in here. So even though I'm gonna lay this down as my base color for my bloom, I know a few are gonna be wondering what I'm doing <laughs> to do what I'm going to do next. I have a crazy idea. And uh, so my interferences were the violet and the gold. Um, I'm going to beef up my interference violet a little bit more, get a little bit more in my cup. And I'm also going to do a blue. And I'm just going to go right to it, put... Might as well use a polypore since it's already out. The only difference between the Vivid and Enamel polypore is this has a little bit of varnish for the baby bloomers to start with. And I don't know why, but uh, Priscilla, how, Priscilla Batzel loves using this stuff as her paint base. She goes right to using the polypore. I think what it is is everybody's got their own comfort zone, right? So uh, you're going to use what has made you feel successful. That's our instinct. And then you kind of get stuck in a rut because you don't want to do something that you don't think is going to make you unsuccessful. So we're afraid to kind of change and experiment and make mistakes like I do on camera. But, you know. Let's see, violet, do we go green? I'm looking at all the colors I got here. Green or violet, green or, I'm gonna go blue. I was gonna do green or blue, let's, let's do blue. We know blue will be compatible, at least with the purple. It'll be compatible with all those reds. But I need some more interference blue in this jar. You haven't seen any mistakes, you're just being too kind. So this has interference blue, sparkle blue. This has more interference violet, sparkle violet. Because I'm actually going to use some clear. Again, I got it. I got an idea how I might be able to get this to work. I just, I've never spun a big tie like this. So we're going to see. Uh, both of these cups are going to need another squirt of the varnish. Cup, I know I added more uh, 
mica too. Yeah, I kind of want to do a clear base. Then I'm going to lay a little black down on the bottom of the pile just so it gives a darker base for the color of spin if you wonder where I'm going with this. And uh, I even had a prism pour to mix up here to use as one of the colors if we need to, but we're running out of time. I've been drawn too much as usual. I have a tendency to talk and share too much. And so we're already at 85 minutes, and I know, don't know how long everybody can hang on on a Saturday morning. I used to watch uh, Patty Tully Parish on Saturday mornings when YouTube had something called Google Hangouts. And we'd be cleaning our house or doing the laundry and listening from her from the other room, and she'd be on for like two or three hours just playing live. This was years ago. But it was fun on a Saturday morning to just have a whole bunch of us hang out and chat while she was doing her thing. And again, like I'd be making breakfast and then turn over to my PC, what is she doing now? You know, I wasn't literally intently staring her for three hours, but... And it was every single Saturday morning we knew she was going to be on. Okay, so everybody knows what a skim coat flood coat is. We've all been there, done that. Got to get all my cell activators and stuff out of the way. First thing to do is got to make sure this sticks, right? It's a, I don't think it's going to fly off, but the last thing I need this to do is to fly off. So I do have some White House paint here. I don't plan on using it on the front. But the tricks, what's worked for me so far. Get myself a, a bigger stick. Well, I'm running out of all my popsicle sticks, guys. I got to re-up my little containers here. Is to put a little bit on the edges Put some paint on the edges here. So when I spin this thing, it doesn't spin off. I'm not sure how much you can see this. The only thing is I don't want any white paint getting on the front. Be careful, Leslie, don't make a mess. I just realized what I could be doing here. Just trying to get a little paint on the edge so it sticks to this spinner, this glass spinner. I know people that pour, pour a whole bunch of paint down, but to me, that's a waste of paint. And then I'm trying to pick up paint from the bottom of my piece. I'm sure there's gotta be a better way to doing this. Who said damn? Okay, I got a little white here where I don't want it. What did Sherry say? What'd you do, Sherry? <gasps> Just now? When did this happen? Please tell me you're okay, honey. That's our family here. One of our family members got hurt. Heard it did. I'm gonna wipe this white off the top. Cause I'm not sure if I want that white there right now. I might, I might not. Okay, so this is a pretty big tile. It looks like it will actually take three blooms. <sighs> Never tried to do a bloom on a tile this big. You're gonna see it first here. Now I'm gonna to have to actually blow this. No, I'm not gonna let you see the back of my head. I'm gonna to have to get over him, bend over on this thing. Okay, but I think that paint on there, yep. It's not gonna come off. All right. All right, so what I wanna do is create a Clear coat base, again, I this might be considered nuts, but I wanna put some of my polypore down. I 
this should work. In theory, this should work. Now I'm looking for all my tools and it looks like my silicone tools have all the silicone still up on them, not peeled off. I know somewhere here I've got a big, uh, I know I have a big spatula somewhere. Let's see if this thing helps me spread this out. This is actually for spreading joint compound, but it does kind of help. Because remember, paint goes wherever paint's already gone. So I'm just going to put some clear down here. This is a because I couldn't find my spatula. <laughs> I'm going to use my joint compound spreader. Get this thing wiped off. Let's hope it works. Leslie's great experiment after mixing all these colors today. Then with these interferences, I kind of want to do a little bit of gold over that. Not all of it. A little bit of the violet over all of this. A little bit of this blue all over this. Give me a second. I found my swiping papers the other day. The ones I told you I used in 2017, this is that plastic they give you when it's covering uh, items that you buy in the mail. This came on my gel press plate and you can tell how much this thing's been used for swiping. Because of the weight of the paper, now I do prefer it doing this way because gravity, right, as you're pulling it, will drag it straight across. If I did it this way, it would probably fit the entire width of my tile. So I'm going to use this to just kind of spread, make contact, and then just slowly drag that interference base across. And anything that's left, ooh, look at that. Look how pretty that is. We can definitely put this back on so nothing is wasted, right? Put it right back on the edge. Wow, oh my God, those interferences look beautiful. Yee! I could just do a swipe on this. Look at that, I'm gonna pick this up and show you guys. Can you see how pretty that is right now? <laughs> That would be a great beginning for a swipe. But I know I'm supposed to be blowing a bloom for you. <laughs> Oops. Would you guys really mind if I did? <laughs> I may have to do a second piece because I love the idea. And I've never done a swipe with this form of uh, laying it out. Okay. So I made the black for a reason. Let's try doing <laughs> I'm loving that right there. So I'm going to do a little black pile right here. This will be the first part of my bloom. Because I wanted to put a black base down. And I'll put a second one here. Hopefully it'll stretch right. I don't have to do a third one in the middle. Come on, don't go outside of my little pile here. Okay, so I've got black now. I'm going to intentionally put another opaque color on the bottom. Okay, because the rest of our colors have a translucency to them. So here is the Titan Teal from the Vivid Intense mixed in. Here's a bunch, here's a scoop of the Titan Teal. And 
now comes the tricky part, the way we layer our colors and how they kiss with one another. The interferences are really gorgeous, layered in between. It creates a beautiful effect. So what colors do we have? We have a purple. We have uh, this beautiful fennel flower orange. We have a yellow. We've got the pink, like a jasmine pink, and we've got this red. So jasmine pink, we have a lot of. I think I'm gonna put that down. Still feels a little thick to me. Now, I'm now probably putting too much paint on. I can probably hear Mandy's voice in my head saying, too much paint, Leslie. I'm gonna try to back off from this point on. I know those piles are rather big. You're going skiing next week. Congratulations there, girl. Why not? If you're still able, woohoo. Go for it, right? Okay, so next to this bright pink, I think I'm actually going to put in, oh my God, I'm so still in love with what this Pineapple Crush looks like. I'm sorry, I have to show it in the camera when my heart stops. So there's the Pineapple Crush. And I've seen so many of these people doing blooms drizzle. I don't know why when I was doing mine, I didn't drizzle. Of course, it was in the beginning when we were just learning, right? Now, where this yellow and, and uh Jasmine are going to run together. Remember, they, they, uh, they're they going to probably make some kind of orange where they mix together. But if it spins out some pretty pink parts for me, I'll be really, really happy. Okay. Now, let me add in between that. I'm going to do something contrasting. I'll do the violet. I'm going to do some interference violet here. Then almost everybody does some kind of solid opaque in between a few stacks of that. Uh, I realize I could be using that black again. I'm going to cheat. Close your eyes. Close your eyes, Mandy. <laughs> I'm actually going to put some white cell activator in the center of this thing to make up for wanting to put a little bright color in there, some kind of opaque color in there. Just a little dribble. Now this is white cell activator. Then the next color, let's go ahead and add this Snapdragon. Looks like my piles are getting really big. It should definitely spin out bright <laughs> What do you guys think? Okay. And then I'm going to add the Bordeaux. Ooh, wait a minute. Let's add a little bit of interference blue here. Might as well go all four in. All in. All in. All in. Little interference blue. Then let's add our Bordeaux. Blissful Bordeaux. You know, this reminds me of the puddle pour technique when, uh, God, I wonder if I should do that instead. Melly D in 2016 was doing puddle pour techniques where the, ba the, the canvas had three puddles like this. She'd run her finger through the three. The background, though, was a dry canvas, and then she'd tilt. I mean, it's an interesting concept, right? Because you could do a puddle pour you, nowadays using the cell actor version stuff that we have and get even a better result from that puddle pour technique than she did years ago. Um, I like that pink. So let's put a tiny bit of, let's put some interference blue. What did I put? I, put, I didn't use the gold yet. Let's put some gold here. Might as well go. I'm going all in, guys. 
I mean, this is what you guys might be fantasizing about, right? When you're thinking about doing this type of work, you're going, can I stack this under this? What happens when this gets mixed with this? Well, that's okay. I'll make the mistakes on camera for you. Now, what I've done different is I don't have a white base. I've already created a, a translucent, shimmery, whatever you want to call it, with a lot of interferences in it. Let me get all these colors out of the way. Is they're going to get in the way when I start spinning. Oh, no, no. Would you ever sell a surprise gap? Well, I have some of them in my garage, honey. And, uh, yeah. So once we get this funding straight, we reorganize the warehouse. This is going to give us some of our timing. Then uh, we'll start production. you got to give us at least a month's turnaround. And then we'll be announcing a pre-order event going. They're drying. We got them on the racks. They're almost ready to go. <laughs> Does that look like a jaw dropper? Does it really? <laughs> That was not something I played with as a kid. The jaw, somebody says it looks like a jawbreaker. <laughs> the candy, right? Okay, I'm just trying to make room here. Give me a second, I'm scooching stuff back and forth so I don't spin off paint into other paint and my arms and hands don't get caught up in this. Okay, I'm gonna try to do this with my, this little puppy. If it doesn't work, I am going to have to actually plug in that little blow dryer. Oh, wait a minute. Hello. I can use a regular blow dryer. Can't I? I don't have to use a little blow dryer in the world. Hang on a minute. Let me get this thing untangled. I think... I've seen people do it with this, so why can't we do it with one of these? Yeah, I think a lot of us in America have a sweet tooth issue. Give me a minute, guys. My cord is really tangled up. I wasn't planning on using this today, and yet it makes more sense. I just want to make sure I have full extension of this thing when I start trying to blow. Oh my God, what did I do? It is really tangled up, and it's completely underneath other cords. Okay, now I can use this full, full tilt, and it's all the way out. Okay, so I'm gonna end up having to use this in my blow dryer. So let's get started with the cell activator. I think I'm going to do uh, a little bit of the black. And this I will drizzle a little bit out. That might be too much black. Oh, that's a lot of black. Stop dropping. I don't need that much. Uh-oh. Oops, that was the paint from beneath. That wasn't the cell activator. Sorry, guys. I kind of blew that. <laughs> Forgive me. So this one's going to look a little bit different because it's got some of the black base I put in the base put here. Here is my actual black cell activator. We'll go into this one. Then I'm going to try the one that we just made, our custom cell activator, this kind of orangey, pumpkin-y color that we made.
I'm having trouble reaching. If you're wondering why this isn't perfect, I'm sitting here trying to stretch across, guys. And then I'm going to put white, but underneath the white, one more little drop of the blue. I want as much interference in this piece as I can. I know I'm a crazy girl for bling bling. And then white. And a nice amount of the white cell activator because we got a lot of color here. This may deconstruct right on camera for us. <laughs> See how this works. All right, way too much cell activator if I had to guess what I'm doing there. I'm sure all the critics in the crowd are watching. All right, so first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to move my camera over here. I'm going to have to try to blow this and get my mouth on this thing because I can't get there. So bear with me and get my glasses off. Well, it's not like me blowing. Apparently, the paint might be too thick. So we're gonna go right to blow drying. I am standing up though. Uh, I'm nervous about this because it won't go cool. All right, I'm gonna put in the leaf blower. Give me a sec, this is gonna be real tricky here. Try to unplug the phone, put in the leaf blower. There's something wrong with my phone because it was 100% this morning and now it's not doing it. So I apologize. <laughs> Come on, leaf blower, get in there for me, buddy. Gotta go, get in. There we go. All right, let's try the littlest leaf blower. My little iPad fell over where you guys are talking to me. But we have the littlest leaf blower going here. Now we're getting some sellage on this first one. The littlest leaf blower looks like this, and it's supposed to kind of work like that. Not sure if that's any better. But it looks like it's getting the cell activator to move a little bit more. Yeah, I could have had fun. I could have swiped this. We could have swiped it. I made the end of my... Oh, it's flat with aluminum foil. That's kind of interesting, right? So it would have more of a... Uh, directional thing. Someone said they customized their leaf blower by putting aluminum foil at the end of it. That's kind of interesting. I don't really care how strong that orange cell activator is, but you know, that's my first gut reaction to this. Take the black extension off. Oh, this thing. Okay, hang on. This thing.
Okay, because this one needed a little more help. All we want to do is skitter that white across, right? We're not trying to lift up every color. There you go. There's more sellage popping up. See that? We're getting some cells popping up. All right, well, interesting piece. You're right, and I do like this, because you're right, if we start it in the middle and go up, it goes wider. Trying to do a double on a tile, I know I'm pushing myself way outside of the normal beginner limits. And considering it's been so many years since I did the bloom, I feel like a beginner again. All right, well, let's see what happens when we spin this sucker. Let me get my leaf blower cord out of the way. And see what happens. Turn what over? Okay, I, uh, it kicked me out of the live. Give me a minute so I can see what you guys are saying. Turn what over? The blower. So instead of doing it like this, you do it like like this, right? Okay, that's interesting. All right, so how are we going to get these two to do something with us together on our spin bloom thing? Got a lot of colors on this piece, but I'm not real thrilled with how that pumpkin is dominating everything. I mean, seriously, that is one strong color that we made. This is kind of interesting. This it looks like a splat. <laughs> yeah, it looks like a big giant, like a whip plop. So what if I wanted to, most people will sit and do a hoop de doo and connect them. I'm going to try to, because I'm losing a lot of color here, I'm going to, what am I going to do? I am going to find a bigger pie slice thing and try to give it a little tilt. Because you can also tilt. It's okay to tilt. When you're doing the bloom, it's all right to tilt it. You're supposed to use gravity. I'm kind of liking this color combination a little bit better than the one that I have here. Just gonna move it down. I'm trying to move, let gravity kind of move it a little bit in so we don't lose all of it. Okay, now. Let's take some cell activator. So this isn't gonna be like a typical, typical bloom that I blown, right? We're gonna end up turning this into some kind of swipe. Now, I would have an option to go over the whole thing with a black swipe and live with what happens, okay? I have an option to also uh, just use white cell activator and try to do one of these with it, which is my first instinct. Add some white to the back of this thing. I mean, I know I'm doing it on a tile. I didn't use white, paint, white house paint. I broke all the rules. I put on all the interference on that backside. There's just enough white cell activator on there. There's nothing extra. And uh, I kind of want to do something with all of this. I don't really like what happened there, but I do like what's happening over that black. If I can get them to talk to one another and meet each other in the middle, all that interference in that black's going to look really pretty. Okay. I'm going to do another one on the other end. 
again, this is, I'm salvaging my piece, right? It didn't turn out like a bloom, but I can still make something abstract out of this using these colors. No excess cell activator on the back of the blade. You want an even amount when you're gonna do this. I am really digging that pattern right there. I can tell, you can tell my heart is a, is a swipe girl. I really am the swipe girl. So let's kind of do the same thing, only I'm gonna go this way with it. Might as well. I'm trying to fix my piece here. <laughs> and let's spin this thing and see what that does. I can't believe there's 32 people still watching and we're 116 minutes in. Thank you so much for following along on this very strange little journey. Again, that's, uh, like I said, this pumpkin color is kind of bugging me. This isn't too bad. This turned out a little strange. Trying to figure out my little composition thing here. I kind of want to do the swipe, like literally go with swipe this way with it. I don't want to wipe all these colors off, but I want to do something with those pretty colors. Since we've already committed to the fact that this is turning into a bloom slash, it didn't bloom for me, so here we're going to swipe it. <laughs> Again, I could just take my whole paper but then it would change this part right here. I could swipe the whole thing with that plastic paper swipe. Okay, I said I wanted to go this way. It's not my instinct. I'm gonna to try to do this with my left. Oh, shoot. Do this with my left hand. That wasn't too smart. <laughs> my left hand is not as good as my right hand. Wow, but look at this. This is kind of interesting. I want to keep moving that white here. Yeah, my right hand's going to have to be the one that's used for this. It, uh, the left hand wants to, just can't feel where the place to stop and start is. Okay, I'm going to take a vote. I really want my instinct is to take this paper and swipe it with the white. <laughs> and I realize everybody's watching this crazy idea that I had, but if I do go over with the white, the thing is, is I will lose some of this. I'm gonna lose some of this but then we know it's gonna make it look like the whole piece was meant to be done this way. So to bail myself out of what I'm thinking is a failed swipe, uh, I'm actually gonna get my bigger piece. I have a really large piece that I use, and that way you can cover the whole thing and you have the weight, this is enough weight this is enough weight to handle this. I'm gonna go for it, kid. But I'm gonna have to put the white on it kind of off camera. I'm not gonna be able to make it that easy, so I'll just put it on the edge here and get my white across the, let's make sure, yeah, this is the right width, this'll work, okay. I love this paper. When I found this, I was so glad I found this because I tried to tell you guys there's a paper that comes when your products get wrapped. It's a heavier form of plastic. It's the perfect weight for doing swipes, especially big swipes. I have that 24 by 48 inch on my wall and I did it with this paper you're watching me paint right now. You can do really huge swipes with them because it's not flimsy. And when you tilt it up, and I'm gonna stand up and show you guys how I did this. Now, uh, because there's so much white 
been used. I don't, th I think I should drizzle. Oh, there's a lot of black in there, Never mind. Okay, we're gonna stick with the white. All right, let's get up and over this thing as much as we can. Let's get the camera up and over. Figured out how to do this this morning so you guys aren't gonna lose anything while I'm doing this. Let's get this up and over so you can see what I'm doing. This has the most color, so I'm gonna start from this end. I kind of like the color combination on this end the best. So what you do is you make sure where your paint is, it makes full contact. Let's see if we can get this here, there you go. Make full contact, lay it down, make sure it's touching it, and then just gently drag The whole thing. I got cups in the way here trying to fight me on this. Whole thing across. Oops, it stopped and started there because I stopped. Wow. And that's a lot of paint that it drug off. I'm not going to put that back on this because I want to see what's going to happen to this. Place where I don't care, it gets paint on it. So I think I went a little bit overboard on my colors. This is kind of interesting though. Okay, you're not gonna probably relate to what I'm doing here, but if I was sitting here trying to make a piece that I was gonna save, this is what I would be doing. I like some of these colors and those ir iridescences are popping up gorgeous, so I don't want too much of this in here. But if I can get just a little more color, to show up in this end, because there's a lot of black is kind of turning gray here. And then re-swipe it. If it'll let me do it, I gotta do it quick. Well, it's still, this part I love. If you could see what's happening here with that white over the interference, it's absolutely gorgeous. But uh, I feel like we need just a little bit more color on this end. And then now we don't have that paper in the way. I'm going to use the uh, smaller paper this time around. I kind of have no choice. And just get it on that one end. This is not bad. I'm liking what that's doing. And again, I like the air and interference in there. Putting a little white cell activator on the back of this. I can hang the camera on. I know I can hang it on the overhead, but then I can't turn around and talk to you guys. I have to be able to sit and stand, sweetheart. I get it. Okay, making contact. Once we get to the new place, we're going to have a second, second camera for overhead work. And I have a big, giant cannon. Uh, ooh, that's way prettier now. Whoa, 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 look at that. Oh, I'm, that's much better. And it's even going along with this uh, interference thing that's happening here in this corner. I know you can't quite see. I'll show you guys when it dries because I'm getting all pockets of interference in here in the white. Okay, I think I saved it. <laughs> it wasn't exactly what I planned. But can I just say, 
most of the time, it never is exactly as we plan, right? Now, let me get this camera down. Now, here's the problem. I have to sit in part of this, so I know I can get the overhead on there, but then you're never going to be able to see me on camera and talk to you because it has to go up at a certain height. And like I said, when we move, when I move, uh, I have this incredible Canon camera that, that sits on top and it zooms in and out. I've already got the decoder for it. So when we do it on the live, it'll use that camera for overhead. I'll be able to use another camera for face on. I'll be able to use another camera for side view or even another camera. Let's say, here's my fantasy, like a cooking show. I do a piece. Here's what it looks wet. Let's go down to the next station and I'll show you what it looks like when it comes out of the oven. That's gonna be the goal. But um, this is getting some interesting sellage happening here. Sadly, you're gonna be looking at my side view now, but that is pretty darn interesting. Yeah, but that's art. Dry wet as a skin. Would it be cool if you could just hang the camera from the ceiling, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, I know I can hang my camera overhead. That's, that's not the problem, Gretch. It's doing the live thing and being able for me to say, you know what I mean? And then go right back to the image. And Gretch, I didn't know this. I think this is your first time visiting us. I'm on camera a lot and I had knee replacement surgery. So standing up, getting up and down, oh, I'm getting better, but uh, some of the stuff needs to be sitting down. I'm really enjoying this pattern. And one more time, I'll give you guys an overhead view before I sign off, but I wanna thank you for joining me. My name is Leslie Onstead. I'm the creator of Color Art Products. I'm here three days a week, Tuesdays and Fridays at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time and 9 a.m. on Saturdays. I really enjoy having you here with me and going through this crazy process, looking at all my old blooms that I did. I just wanted to let you go, let you guys know I went down the bloom rabbit hole. I went to that whole thing. Yeah, Gretchen, yeah, I have a great cannon. I've got about four webcams. And what you don't know is I have to move out of this house after 18 years. And, you know, it's going to be a pain to move, but uh, I'm going to be able to set longer space. I have an electronic spinner. Wait for all of me to take you to my electronic spinning station that can spin something up to a 22 by 24 inch canvas. I am so excited about this move. Anyway, membership drive still going on. We've almost made our goal. You guys have a chance to buy those cards anywhere from 41 to 50% off to save some money for future products. There will be a purely pigment set three. I kind of need to time this. I got to make sure I got another or jars pending before I announce the new colors because pruder events normally take 10 days not three to four weeks like the last time. We had an issue with the jars uh, needing to be reprinted. And so it took a long time for that release to go out. And I don't wanna do that right now while we're trying to raise capital and then have it take for years, 18 years. Yeah, I've been here 18 years. Uh, it, it's my studio, it's my office, and my lab is here where I make everything and the landlady wants to move her daughter back in here. So, and Ferguson, oh my goodness, I haven't seen you in ages. Oh my goodness, I and so many names are popping up that I recognize as being customers, but anyway, we're grateful you guys are here. Uh, hopefully you can join us with the membership drive, but we'll make it easier for people who can't afford to get in it now. Once we get to the, uh, past this goal and we're getting everything restructured and me moving, we're gonna be uh, offering some kind of monthly program so everybody at any level has a chance to get in and save money. And once that 40% code goes off here in the next uh, 48 hours, we're gonna go back to 20% code, but after the first of the month, that 20% code's going away, remember that. So get your deals now if you're in love with color art and wanna order some more. Of course I remember you, Anna, of course I do. <laughs> 
I remember a lot of people's names. Usually it's because it was an issue with the order I might have had to fix. But that's okay. Thank you, guys. Have a beautiful day. Hugs and kisses. See you Tuesday. Bye.